Cyclone Bipar Joy and Tropical Storm Guchol both intensifying in the Pacific and Indian Oceans. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for June 8th. So those two aforementioned storms, stronger than we left them yesterday. Vipar Joy is still a Category 1. Guchol, a nearly Category 1 typhoon at 70 miles per hour on our latest estimate. Code Blue right now, 22 storms have formed so far in 2023. It's day 8 of Atlantic hurricane season and there's no areas of interest and the NHC are back down to 0% for that system near the Azores which is completely died off there as you can quite clearly see another little system near the bahamas right now but nothing really coming from that day 25 of the pacific hurricane season and things are still as we left it yesterday very quiet with only a few thunderstorms blowing up over the uh, intertropical convergence zone but really not much to talk about at all there it's a rather stable environment in the main tropical zone Kuchol there in the Western Pacific, Philippine named Chedeng. Uh, it is well within the Philippine Sea, but it will miss the islands. It will turn northwards and then northeastwards towards the Japanese islands. Its main threat will probably be to the Agasawara Island chain this weekend. Cyclone Bipajoy is more difficult to pin down. It's still got very uncertain uh, future ahead of it regarding uh, model projections and the like, uh, but it will eventually pass pretty close to Oman, we think, early next week. Satellite imagery in the last 24 hours de depicts both of those cyclones quite clearly on this uh, rainfall chart, and some of those red zones uh, correlating to extremely heavy rainfall. A third little system there along the coast of Myanmar causing lots of rainfall though, but that is not a tropical cyclone. Well, here's the latest satellite imagery, and I must say that Guchol is looking pretty good and will probably reach typhoon status very shortly. There it is, gradually moving towards the northwest, and here's some rapid scan imagery of a uh, raggedy, quite loose eye starting to appear on that imagery. Convection isn't the best, but it is decent, and it is continuing to grow. And here is Bipar Joy in the last few hours as well. You can see it had a decent eye feature earlier on in the day, uh, but that has degraded somewhat and we're holding steady at around 85 miles per hour for this storm, which uh, the uh, central bulk of it there on the right hand side and an enormous band on the left hand side there, that western side, uh, but blowing up huge amounts of convection in both of those areas of interest. And here's some more imagery of Guchol once again. Uh, thunderstorms blowing up all around the uh, eye feature there. And there it is on the infrared, really starting to look quite a bit better there um, with cloud tops on three different areas spiraling round. When we see things like that, that is a sign potentially of rapid intensification. Eastern Pacific sea surface temperatures look like this. They're still very warm and of course getting warmer and that will be the trend until around September. 32 degrees Celsius possibly in one or two little spots there. The Atlantic, still a few warm spots there as well that are growing too. The Gulf Stream looking fine off the east coast of Florida and the Gulf of Mexico in general looking good except for near the Florida Panhandle where it's still not up to speed just yet but the rest of the basin looking pretty warm. Uh, Caribbean being the hot spots with temperatures up to 30 degrees. Western Pacific is uh, filling in that gap left by Typhoon Noir last week and is starting to rebound again. The rest of the basin that wasn't affected by that typhoon already looking decent with temperatures around 30 degrees Celsius, maybe slightly more where Guchol is. And here is the Indian Ocean. The Arabian Sea is a real hotbed for this cyclone right now, Bipar Joy up to around 32 degrees Celsius and a little bit higher earlier on. Uh, it'll degrade a little bit as it moves northwestwards. Southwest Indian Ocean looks like this into the off season now, just about holding on 26 degrees in Mauritius. On the coast of Australia, still looking okay up the top end and the northern tip of the Cape York Peninsula, but not much going on here. And the South Pacific looking like this, Fiji temperatures around 28 degrees Celsius on the Northern Islands. Looking at the anomalies then, you can see there warm and cold 
anomalies, much above average though in the Arabian Sea where it matters right now. Where Guchol is, it's around average, and in the eastern Pacific we're seeing that creeping El Nino pattern, which continues to grow right now, particularly in the eastern part of the basin, so things are looking like we're going to be in a substantial El Nino by this year's end. And here is the oceanic heat content, which is uh, increasing again in the Caribbean Sea gradually, uh, particularly in the Western Caribbean there, getting up some decent values. Eastern Pacific also growing slowly but surely. Nowhere, uh, in fact, much better than last year. I was gonna say last year was nowhere near what we're seeing this year so far. Western Pacific, very much high values over there in the Philippine Sea underneath Guchol as well, which might give it a little rocket there for it to intensify quite a bit more yet. So here it is moving northwestwards at first. It'll be really critical to see how far northwestward it goes because it may then get affected by the upwelling that, the, that Moa caused. But if it stays further eastward, it will have a better chance of intensification, more of it. Uh, but as it is right now on that GFS model run, calling for probably a category three peak there, curving northeastwards and then going on to affect uh, Iwo Jima and the Agasawara island chain by the time we get to the 12th and 13th of June. Here is the Arabian Sea, Cyclone Bipajoy, and there it is, strengthening quite rapidly at times. It's a small compact system, so it's really open to fluctuation in intensity, but also in track as you look at that imagery there. It really doesn't know where it's going on that latest GFS run, and models are still in quite a bit of disagreement over where exactly this storm is going to go. So we can't really call it properly yet. It may not make landfall on Oman, it may go north of there, or it may completely stall out at sea. Uh, but the highest chance right now is for an Oman landfall not far from the island of Masira. Moving northwestwards, you can see that slow movement will cause very high amounts of rainfall over those uh, sea areas, thankfully. Uh, and the GFS reckons it will steer into Oman a little bit more quickly towards the end of day seven. And this is the seven day projections now up to 16 inches uh, for part of Oman there on the near the eastern tip. That is quite a lot of rainfall, nearly 400 millimeters. And as you can see, out to sea, we're looking at 51 inches of rainfall projected there, which is an extraordinary amount. That's about 2,500 millimeters, but that of course is well out to sea. This track forecast and pattern could change a lot still in the coming days, so I'll check back often for updates. In the longer range then, we're looking at the continuation of this storm. There it is on the GFS. It just about makes landfall there on the eastern tip of Oman, probably passing directly over the capital Muscat, and then back out over the water there, uh, not far from the United Arab Emirates by that point, and then heading sort of towards Iran. Uh, so really uncertain as to what happens there, but a very unusual place for a storm to end up, but it has happened before once or twice, uh, but it was, certainly is big potential for impacts. That's all the serious stuff done with. You can scan the barcode and take a look at the Force 13 merch store with all of our usual items, including full season and individual storm animations at your request. Also, our famous Still Waiting for Hone t-shirt. Is it famous? It's still waiting for people to wear it. I don't know. Well, into the silly range, and this is quite silly, Atlantic and Eastern Pacific going at it at last, and the Atlantic having a very broad hurricane strength storm making landfall over Louisiana there, New Orleans area, getting impacted by a system. Uh, whether that happens or not, big question mark, and the East Pacific finally roars into life with a significant hurricane there, category two or three, as it dips down southwestwards and then starts to move on the usual track towards the west-northwest, as many storms do, and out to sea weakening. So quite a lot could happen there towards the later part of the month, but that is still a very long way away. You can talk about that and anything else in the weather universe on Discord, on our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13 will take you right there. Well, on this day, it was a very late season cyclone in the South Pacific. It was Gina. That image there pictured just after peak, it was about to collapse as a matter of fact to the northwest of New Caledonia. It had a decent eye feature and it was peaking as a category two on the late hours of June the 7th into the early hours of the 8th. 
So that is very much on this day back in 2003. Uh, a couple of other storms were about to form in the later days, including Typhoon Sudalor, the original. 20 years ago on this day. Back to this year, the next name on the Atlantic naming list is Brett. In the Eastern Pacific, Adrian. Will we get it soon? Who knows? Central Pacific, Hone, of which there's still no sign. And no sign of other storms apart from the two that we've got at the moment to become number 23. In the Western Pacific, the next name is Talim. And in the North Indian Ocean, it will be Tej. Uh, so interesting names on the way there in both basins. In the Southern Hemisphere, we've got the rest of this month to see whether we get to Gizani in the Southwest Indian Ocean before the names reset. The Australian region, next up is Jasper, and in the South Pacific, it's Lola. We'll be back again with another tropical weather bulletin tomorrow night.